In this video, I will show you how to create, read, update, and delete clients using ASP.NET Core Web API, Entity Framework, and SQL Server Database. Then, in the next video, I will show you how to use the one-to-many relationship using Entity Framework and how to upload and download files. You can find the video link in the description. First, let's create a new project. So here we can select C Sharp and Web, and you can select ASP.NET Core Web API. Then next, let's call this project API, and let's call the solution Web App. Let's click on next. Then here let's select the version of the .NET framework, so I will use .NET 7. Also, I will disable Swagger because I will use Postman, so let's uncheck this box. So I will not use Swagger because it will be removed from .NET 9. So here we can see that on GitHub, on the repository of ASP.NET Core, we can see that Swagger will be removed in .NET 9. Let's click on Create. So by default we have this controller and we have this model. Let's delete them. Then let's install Entity Framework Packages, so we can make a right click on this project, then Manage NuGet Packages. Let's click on Browse, and here we can type EF SQL Server. So we need this package that allows us to connect to SQL Server, so let's select it, and because I am using .NET 7, I will choose version 7 of this package. Then Install. So now the package is installed correctly. Now we need to install another package. So let's write EF Tools. Let's select this package. Let's select the version. Then install. So we need this package because it allows us to execute these commands on the package manager console. Now let's close this page. And let's create the DB context class that allows us to connect to the database. So it is a service, so let's create a new folder. And let's call it services. Then let's create a new class. And let's call it application DB context. Let's extend the DB context class of entity framework. And let's create the constructor, so we can use this helper. And let's select this option. Now let's add this DB context class to the service container. So let's go to program.cs. And let's add it to the service container. So just here, we can call builder.services.addbcontext. And we will add a DB context class of type application DB context. Let's configure the DB context class. So we will connect to SQL Server, so we need to call use SQL Server. And we need to provide this method with the name of the connection string. So let's provide it with a string. Let's write name is equal to and the name of the connection string. We can call it default connection, for example. Then let's define this connection string in upsettings.json. So this is upsettings.json. We need to create a new section. And let's call it connection strings. Then let's create our default connection string. So I will use this connection string. I will connect to the server that is available on my computer. This is the name of the database. I will use Windows Authentication, so we need to add trusted connection is equal to true, and we need to trust the server certificate. Now let's create a model that allows us to create a table in the database. So let's create a new folder. 
and let's call it models. Then let's create a new class. And let's call it client. Then let's add the different properties of this model. So we need the ID which is the primary key, we need the first name, the last name, the email address, the phone number, the address, the status and the date. Then let's configure the email address to be unique. So here we need to decorate this model with the index attribute. And we need to define the name of the property that should be unique. So here the name of the property is email. And we need to define a property called is unique. Now let's add a new property in application DB context that allows us to create the client's table in the database. So we can create this property and the name of this property will be the name of the table in the database. So we will create a table that is described by the client model. Let's add the namespace. Now let's save all the files and let's create a new migration file. So let's click on package manager console and let's write add migration and the name of the migration file. Let's call it first migration. So this migration file has been created and it allows us to create the client's table in the database. Now let's create the table. So we need to call update database. Now let's connect to the database. So we will connect to this database. So we can use Visual Studio and we can click on Server Explorer. Then let's create a new connection. So I will connect to the server that is available on my computer and the name of the database is DB100. Then let's trust the server certificate. So let's click on Advanced and let's set Trust Server Certificate to True. Then OK. Now let's expand this connection. Then let's expand tables and here we have the client's table. So now let's fill this table with some data. So we can make a right click, then new query. And let's write the SQL query that allows us to fill the client's table. So I will use this query that allows us to fill the client's table with these clients. Let's execute this query so we can click on this button. And here we can see that 16 rows have been inserted. Now let's create a new API controller that allows us to perform CRUD operations on clients. So let's create it in the controllers package. Let's select API, then API controller empty, then add. And let's call it clients controller. So this controller will be accessible at the URL slash API slash the name of the controller without the word controller. So it will be accessible at the URL slash API slash clients. Now let's create the constructor that allows us to request the application DB context from the service container. Then let's save it into a field, so we can use this button. Then create and assign field context. Then let's create a new action that allows us to read the available clients. So we can create this method called getClients that will return a list of client objects. It will be accessible using the get method at the URL slash API slash clients. So here we will return the list of clients, so we can write context, which is our application DB context, dot clients, dot order by descending to display the newest clients first, and we will order the clients by descending order of ID. Then we will return the list of clients. Let's run the application. So by default the application will run in the browser. So here we can see that we are using this port number. Let's delete the name of this controller that we already deleted. And let's write API slash clients. And here we have the list of clients. 
So now I will show you how to change the port number and how to disable the browser. So let's go to properties and let's open this file. Then let's update the profile that we are using to run the application. So let's update this HTTPS profile and here we don't need the browser. So let's set this property to false. Then let's change the port number of HTTPS. So here we can use the port number 4000 for example. Let's save the file and let's run the application again. Now the application is running and we don't have the browser. So let's test the application using Postman. Let's open a new tab. Let's select the get method and let's provide the URL. So the port number is 4000 and the endpoint is slash API slash clients. Let's click on send. And here we have the list of clients. Now I will show you how to read a client by ID. So let's create a new action. So we can create this method and get client that requires the client ID that should be available in the URL. So we will access to this action using the HTTP get method. And then we need to read the client having this ID. So we can call context.clients.find and this is the client ID. If we don't find a client with this ID, then we will return not found. Otherwise, we will return a success response with the client data. Let's run the application. Then let's add the client ID in the URL. So here we have a success response and here we have the details of the client having the ID for. Let's provide an ID that does not exist. 40 for example. So now we have not found. Now I will show you how to create clients. So first let's create a DTO model that allows us to create clients. Let's create it in the models package. And let's call it client DTO. Then let's add the different properties of this class. So we need the first name which is required, the last name is required, the email address is required and should have the email address format. Then we have the phone number which is optional and if we provide the phone number then it should have the phone number format. The address is optional and then we have the status that is required. Then let's create a new action in clients controller that allows us to create clients. So we can create this method create client that will be accessible using the post method. We need the submitted data that allows us to create a new client. And if the data of this object is not valid, then we will not execute this method. Otherwise, if the submitted data is valid, then we will execute this method. So just here, we need to check if we have another client having the same email address because in the client model, the email address should be unique. So first let's check if we have another client having the same email address. So if we have another client having the same email address, then we need to add an error to the model state. So it will be related to the email property of the model and the error message will be the email address is already used. Then let's add this model state to an object of type validation problem details and let's return a bad request with this object. Otherwise the email address is not used so we can create a new client using the submitted data of client DTU. So we can create this client using the data of client DTU, then we need to save this client in the database. So we can call context.clients.add and we will add this client. Then we need to save the modifications and we can return a success response with the created client. So we can return OK of client. Let's run the application. Let's create a new tab, 
let's select the post method and let's provide the URL. Then let's submit the data and the request body. So let's select body, let's select row, then JSON. Then let's send this object. So here we can see that we have a success response and here we have the created client. So here we have the client ID and the date which is the current date. Now I will show you how to update clients. So let's go to clients controller and let's create a new action. So we can create this method that will be accessible using the HTTP put method. It requires the client ID that should be available in the URL and the submitted data which is of type client DTU. First let's check if the submitted email address is already used by another client or not. So if we have another client having the same email address, then we can return an error message related to the email address, which is the email address is already used. So here we can return a bad request with the validation object that we created just here. Otherwise, let's check if we have a client with this ID. So if we don't have a client with this ID, then we can return not found. Otherwise, we need to update the client details with the submitted data. So here we will update the client details using the submitted data of client DTU. Then we need to save the data in the database. So we need to call context.save changes. Then we can return a success response with the updated client. So we can return OK of client. Let's run the application. Let's create a new tab, let's select the put method, and let's provide the URL. So let's update the client to the ID 17. Let's select body, then row, then JSON. And let's send this object. So here we can see that we have a success response, and we have the updated client profile. Now let's create a new action that allows us to delete clients. So we can create this method that will be accessible using the HTTP delete method and it requires the client ID that we have to provide in the URL. So we need to read the client having this ID. If we don't have a client with this ID, then we can return not found. Otherwise, we need to delete the client from the database. So we need to call context.clients.remove and we will delete this client. Then we need to save the modifications and we can return a success response. Let's run the application. Let's create a new tab. Let's select the delete method. And let's provide the URL. So let's delete the client to the ID 17. So if we click on send the first time, we have a success response. This means that the client to the ID 17 has been deleted. And if we send the request again, this time we have not found. Now I will show you how to connect to the web API using a front end application. So I already prepared this HTML file that will connect to the web API using JavaScript. Let's take a look at the source code. So here we have this table and we will fill this table using JavaScript. So we will call this method to fill this table. And we will call this statement to read the data from this URL. Now let's open this file using the browser. But for the moment we can see that the table is empty. Let's take a look at the console. And here we can see that we have this error. We have cross origin request blocked. So to fix this error, we need to enable course. So let's go to our application. Let's go to program.cs. Then let's configure the pipeline to enable course. So we need to call app.useCourse and we need to allow any header, any method and any origin. 
Let's run the application again. Let's refresh the page. And this time we have the list of clients. In the next video, I will show you how to use one-to-many relationship using Entity Framework and how to upload and download files. You can find the video link in the description.